Hi guitarlings, I'm Gray at Hub Guitar. Today we're going to learn everybody's favorite nursery rhyme, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, arranged for solo fingerstyle guitar. So here we go. All right, so we're starting off at measure one with a G major chord. That's just gonna be our second finger on the third fret of the big string. And the melody is a G note, so we're not going to play any notes of that chord beyond the G note. So we just need that G, an open D, an open G. You can use your thumb, index, and middle of your right hand to grab those. Repeat the melody note, G. And now we're going to G7. So because I've got my second finger on G of the third fret already on the big string, I just need to put my third finger on the third fret of the fourth string, and my fourth finger, which is my pinky, on the third fret of the second string. And that makes a really nice voicing for G7. That's actually my favorite open voicing of the G7 chord. And then we're going to a C major chord. But because I'm not plucking anything on the fourth string, I don't really bother to put my second finger on the second fret of the fourth string, which you might expect. I just sort of leave it hanging. If it's easier for you to remember C as this chord shape that you're familiar with and you want to push down on that fret, that's fine. Then we resolve to an E minor 7. That's going to be our pinky on the third fret of the second string and probably our second finger on the second fret of the fourth string. We pluck 6, 4, 3, and 2. So whenever we have a combination of four strings like that, we usually want to just pluck thumb, index, middle, and ring all together. On the third measure, we're going to an interesting voicing of the D7 chord, which has an A in the bass. This is actually a D7 chord with an A in the bass. And then you've got F sharp here, an A on the second fret of the third string, and C on the first fret of the second string. And you repeat the melody. Notice that I'm using my pinky there because otherwise it would be pretty hard to accomplish that stretch. If you find this difficult, you could always put a capo on the second or third fret and try again. You'd be surprised what you can do if you just add a capo onto the second fret because it makes a lot of the stretches a lot easier. And there's nothing wrong with that. Back to a G. This time it doesn't matter so much what finger I use because there's not much else going on with that chord. And then I go to my D chord which sort of evolves into a D7 chord. That's really nice. So I've got my pinky on the fifth fret of the fifth string. That gives me my D note, which is the root of the chord. And then I've got my third finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string for my F sharp, which is a third. And I've got my index finger on the second fret of the third string, giving me A, which is the fifth of the chord. So that's a full D triad. And then what I do is I shift down so that the fifth string, instead of being D, turns into C which is actually the flat seventh of the chord, thus turning it into a dominant seventh chord. And that's a really nice transition back to the open G. And I've only got three notes per chord, so I just use thumb, index, and middle for those on the right hand. At measure five, we're going to see a lot of repetition. It's really important to identify any repetition in any tune that you're learning because it will help save you some work. If you knew when you were struggling through measures one and two that that content was coming again, it would make it so much easier to reach the end of the piece because you'll know that you've already encountered some of the material that you're going to play. So basically the same chords that we've used before, maybe in a little bit of a different order. We start with G. I put my pinky on the third fret of the second string there, and I actually put my third finger on the third fret of the big string so that I can easily facilitate a switch to the C major chord on the second half of measure five. That's back to that familiar C major chord. And then back to a G chord, and back to this um, D chord voicing here. And then measures seven and eight have a pretty similar melody, uh, but it starts to sound a little bit different because there are some different chords used. So we start again with a G that we had in measure five, 
And now measure seven starts off the same way as measure five, but instead of going to C major, it goes to A minor seven flat five, which sounds really dramatic for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. But when I was doing this arrangement, I couldn't resist a little bit of drama. So I do a G with my third finger on the big strings, the third fret of the big string, and my pinky on the third fret of the second string. And then to switch to the A minor 7 flat 5, I use these two fingers, the index and second finger, which are already available, and I kind of just jump down. And if that feels kind of awkward, it probably would feel awkward to anybody who hadn't done it before, so just go ahead and practice going back and forth. In fact, whenever you identify any part of a tune that feels weird, just do it a bunch of times and suddenly it will start to feel natural. Now we go to this really awesome A9 chord. And that's a five string chord. So you'll notice that the shape is actually the same as the D chord we did before on strings five, four, and three, but it starts on string six and goes to string five and four. So the same shape. So I've got my pinky finger on the fifth fret of the sixth string. I've got my third finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string, and I've got my index finger on the second fret of the fourth string. But then I strum all the way down to open B. Because there are five notes in that chord, you can't really play it with your four fingers, P, I, M, A. I guess if you used your pinky, you could probably grab all five of them. But that's a little bit of a non-standard finger style technique. So one thing you could do here is you could just omit the note on the fifth string. It would sound almost the same, but might sound a little bit less full and clear. So probably the best way to do this is to use your thumb and brush down six, five, four, three, and two all at once. You can actually use the first string, which you are not playing, as a sort of anchor point or a sort of a, a sort of landing pad, which will then prevent you from going further. So you don't have to play that string because you're landing on it and actually resting on it. That's a really cool technique. And then you repeat the melody and you kind of shift that shape back down to the fifth string to get back to the D. So it's like this. Now in measure nine, we keep going. We've encountered this content before in measure one. And measure 10 is the same as measure two. So it's pretty much the same after that. In fact, the last four measures are really just a repeat of the first four measures. That's why it's so great to see the repetition in the music you're playing. You'll realize this is only actually four to six measures of unique content and the rest of it is just repeated stuff. All right, so that's it for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Thanks for watching.